Hi, I'm Samir, your health coach and PhD student based in Johannesburg, South Africa, and today I'd like to talk to you about three foods that I think every former vegan and vegetarian should introduce. Before we get into it, please do like and subscribe. I hope I'm adding value to your day, and if you enjoy these videos, please do like and subscribe, it really helps me out. So, why make a video about X, what X vegans should eat? Well, a number of people have been coming to me because I myself am an X vegan, and they've been coming with the same kind of complaints. They've been coming with the same kind of deficiencies. And so I thought really it would be helpful to make this video to go over what I think are some of the best foods to introduce if you are in that stage, if you've had to give up veganism or vegetarianism for health reasons, or for some other reason, and you want to, you want to really improve your health. These are three foods that can help. I myself was vegan for most of my 20s. I was vegetarian for all of my 30s. I've only become, uh, I've only started eating meat in the last few years. So these are tips that I wish I had learned sooner as well. So let's get right into it. My first food for ex-vegans and vegetarians is mussels. Mussels are a great source of vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is a super important vitamin. It regulates uh, our heart, it regulates our blood flow. It also is connected with a lot of um, neurological functions, so brain health, depression, these kind of things. So B12 really is something we cannot underestimate the value of. And B12, of course, does not exist in the plant kingdom. B12 is a huge thing and mussels are a great way to get them. Mussels are also a great source of other minerals, such as manganese and selenium which a lot of us are deficient in, whether you're vegetarian or not. So mussels are a great food to introduce, uh, especially for that B12 content. And if you're concerned about things like sustainability, uh, mussels are some of the most sustainable seafood imaginable. Bivalves like mussels are filter feeders, they clean up the ocean. Uh, and the, both the farmed and the wild caught are near the top of the various sustainability indices. So like the Monterey Bay Aquarium in California, they have a sustainability index. Uh, farmed and uh, wild-caught mussels are near the top of that. So I really advise mussels as one of the first foods you want to introduce um, when you stop being a vegan or a vegetarian. The second one is uh, maybe the most important one, and this is liver. Now I'm talking here about chicken liver, I'm talking here about beef liver, also pork liver, also lamb liver. Uh, but if you happen to be uh, anemic, that is if you happen to have an iron deficiency, then chicken liver or pork liver is probably the way to go. Those are super high in iron. For everyone else, uh, beef liver or lamb liver, these are multivitamins. These contain vitamin A, these contain zinc, these contain copper, these contain all the B vitamins, including B12 in high amounts. Um, so really, I can't emphasize this enough that you want to be taking liver as one of, the, um, one of the ways for your body to heal itself, you know, if you've not been doing well with vegetarianism or veganism. So 100% um, liver is the way to go. Chicken liver or pork liver if you have an iron deficiency, otherwise beef liver is an amazing multivitamin. By the way, I'll link below to a study which shows that multivitamins that you buy at the store don't really work. Like there's not a lot of evidence that those provide benefit at all. So instead of taking a multivitamin, why don't you eat a natural multivitamin in the form of liver. The third food I'll talk about, and this is one that um, people often overlook, but it's super important, is just beef. Regular beef, regular meat, muscle meat. Uh, why is this important? Well, if we've been vegan or vegetarian, we've been getting proteins, but we haven't been getting enough proteins in the right ratios most of the time. There's always exceptions. What are those amino acids that we may be missing out on? Well, I'm talking here about lysine, I'm talking here about tryptophan, I'm talking here about carnosine and many other amino acids that, yes, we get them from all foods. Plants contain uh, proteins as well, but we don't get them in the right ratios that our body needs. So beef is something I would introduce three, four, five times a week. Um, if you can, I would urge you to get regeneratively grown uh, beef, grass-fed, grass-finished. But a lot of us can't afford that, so I would say, look, just get the best quality meat you can afford. So with that, uh, thank you very much for listening. I'm Samir, your health coach and PhD student here in Johannesburg, wishing you all a great day.